Sometimes the more we talk about something, the harder it is to figure out what we've said. The Christian Reformed Church and its Senate and its churches has been having a conversation for the last 50 years about the issue of homosexuality. We have many thousands of pages of materials that we've written. We've had uh, a number of minutes that have been taken through our different uh, gatherings. And so what I think might be helpful is for us just to spend a few minutes trying to give a brief and concise and pastoral discussion about what the Christian Reformed Church's position is on homosexuality. And I'd like to do that by addressing four things. First of all, I'd like to talk about our position. I'd like to talk about the posture of our position. I'd like to talk about the promises that our position holds. And finally, I want to talk about the perils that we might see in having this position. The short story of our position is that we recognize that God calls our congregations to be places of love, care, engagement, welcome, and uh, support for all people, regardless of whatever uh, attractions they might have. The second piece is that we understand, as the Christian Reformed Church, that same-sex sexual relationships are against God's will, as revealed in Scripture, for how we use our sexuality in our life. It's important to note also that Christian Reformed Church synods have gone on record to repent of and even condemn the harsh and judgmental attitudes that have characterized our conversation about LGBTQ issues and especially uh, straight and gay people that have been in our congregations. And it's important to note too that our synod has even endorsed and encouraged celibate gay people in our congregations to serve as leaders on the highest level of our denomination. To go back to the foundation of our position, our synod has recognized that same-sex sexual relationships are not in conforming to what we understand the revealed will to God, of God to be in Scripture. And recently our synod has added a second piece to that, and that is that we've interpreted our understanding of the seventh commandment as it's been explained in the Heidelberg Catechism, and that commandment is to do not commit adultery. We've understood that now to refer in our interpretation to issues of sexual brokenness amongst us, like adultery, pornography, uh, premarital sexual relationships, and same-sex sexual relationships. And so in summary, the Christian Reformed Church's position has been one of, of showing love, grace, and care to all people inside and outside our community, regardless of their attractions, but also to recognize that we have a clear understanding about same-sex sexual relationships with regard to Scripture. So though we found it very difficult to live out, in general, as the Christian Reformed Church, we've intended to have a pastoral posture towards the issue of homosexuality. We recognize that our understanding of Scripture is that our posture should be one of recognition that all people are created in the image of God, and that includes uh, whether we're single or celibate, whether we're married, whether we're straight or gay, we've all been created in the image of God. And we all have inclinations that we deal with. God has given us good inclinations because he's created our sexuality. But sin has touched those inclinations. And so often our inclinations can lead us in directions that don't conform to God and his will. We also recognize with regard to our inclinations that they can be affected by sin. But our inclinations are not in and of themselves sins. What matters is how we act on those inclinations. And so we recognize that in terms of our posture that God calls all believers, whether they're straight or gay, whether they're married or single, God calls us all to live out our sexuality in a way that shows purity and connects us to God's will. However, we recognize, of course, that there are times in which we all will struggle and fall short of the ideal that God has for our sexuality. And so we want to recognize, of course, that God offers his grace and forgiveness and reconciliation. We repent and, and we change direction and follow him. And so overall, the posture of our denomination towards homosexuality is that we want to be a welcoming and loving community that calls people to accountability and to grace and to scripture. We're living in a time in a world where there is so much hurting and brokenness and, and difficulty around issues of sexuality. And so the promise of our position is that we have an opportunity to cast a, a hopeful vision of how God can work in our sexuality to bring healing, wholeness, love, and, and change in a world that is struggling with a lot of confusion. 
it's important to recognize that our, the promise of our position on uh, human sexuality and homosexuality, has, it has deep biblical roots in Christian tradition and provides a strong rootedness. It's important to remember, too, that our position embraces the yes of Scripture with regard to our, how God created male and female and the sexuality that they enjoy together. It's also important to point out that our position really leans into the warmth of Jesus Christ and the way that he engages and shows love and grace to people, especially hurting people in scripture. And so this is an important part of the promise of our position. We recognize, of course, that our position is, is very countercultural and that uh, it doesn't conform with the direction that our two societies in the U.S. and Canada have been moving. But in the end, it really is God working through his people to share his word, to share his unconditional love and grace that attracts people to our churches and to the gospel. I want to conclude this uh, discussion about our CRC position on homosexuality by reflecting for a moment on some of the perils that we face in holding this position. I think a first very obvious peril that we face is the issue of hypocrisy. The more we as, uh, as churches and as a denomination talk about same-sex sex, the more the world looks and sees that we have all kinds of other forms of sexual brokenness amongst us. Of course, uh, pornography being a big piece of that, premarital sexual relationships, adultery, and of course, sexual abuse, which has uh, been something that many people have seen in the church of late. We need to recognize, of course, that 1 Peter chapter 4 says accountability starts with the church. A second thing that I think we need to realize as a peril to our position is that we often can be seen as the people of no because we're talking about boundaries and limitations uh, in our position on homosexuality and human sexuality. And while it's good to have boundaries, we need to realize that God always leads with the positive the beauty of our created sexuality and the opportunity that affords us, even as singles and as married couples, uh, to live into God's intention for sexuality in the world. And probably the most obvious and the most concerning is that in holding this position, we've uh, really in a countercultural position in our societies. And so it's very easy for us to act from a position of fear, a position of intimidation. And so we can bring hurt and harm in our words to uh, both straight and gay people struggling with issues of sexuality in our churches and in our membership. And also we can have harsh and judgmental attitudes to people outside of the church. And of course we need to realize that in doing that we contribute to what is a crisis of mental health among um, gay and LGBTQ people as they uh, have higher rates of mental illness, depression, and suicide. And so we need to recognize that we don't want to contribute to, to the harm of people that are within us and that God is calling us to shepherd and to show his love. So I've been sharing the, this pastoral reflection about the, the issue of homosexuality in the Christian Reformed Church in response to direction that we as a denomination have received from our Senate in 2023, which instructed us and told us to uh, equip congregations for pastoral ministry with and to our LGBTQ members and neighbors. And so we're, we've put together some resources that we'd like to share with you um, as part of this video and part of uh, the document that will go along with this. And some of those resources are resources that will help your congregations have healthy conversations within them about um, about how we are together as we have discussions and disagreements and conversations and agreements on this issue. A second piece of uh, the material that we want to share with you is a, is a short list of resources that we think are good resources that can help you to be uh, welcoming, engaging, loving, and gracious uh, to uh, same-sex attracted, straight, gay, married, single people that are among us in our congregations. And we think these resources will be uh, good places for you to look as, as you lean into the calling that we've just discussed in the four parts of our position on human sexuality. Of course, this conversation continues, and it's with humility that we submit these resources to fulfill uh, what our Senate has told us, but we recognize that there are also many other resources out there that are available to you, and, and we want to do the best we can to serve and support the churches. Thank you for taking a few moments to, to listen to this conversation. 
And it's my hope and prayer that as you uh, move forward in your congregations and talk about this issue, that you will go with the blessing of God, who brings peace and um, oneness to his body and to his church throughout the world. Thank you.